Hello and welcome to Kismetrizing. This is your weekly oracle card guidance and we are we have three options here. We have option number one, option number two and option number three. Please go ahead, make your selection. We are using the Mayan oracle um, by uh, Ariel Spilsbury and Michael Brenner, uh, Briner here and that's the uh, cover of it. So go ahead, make your selection and let's get into it. So for those of you who have chosen the option number one here, we're asking, what is your weekly Oracle card guidance? What is the weekly Oracle card guidance? What is it that I need to know at this moment as we go ahead in this upcoming week? So these cards are pretty abstract and I don't particularly have a, um, a reference for them. So I'm just going to go ahead and channel uh, what's coming across. And then I'm going to take a look at what the meaning is that's in the book as intended by the author. So my feeling here is that, well, we have a full moon that's coming on tomorrow. And this is applicable to you also if you're not watching this um, at this time that I've uploaded it, but in the future. So we have some uh, the, the something coming to completion, something coming to an end, something coming to its whole. And, you know, here it looks to me like there's a full moon at the background. And um, it feels to me that there's a gift that comes from this or one needs to acknowledge the gifts that come from it. And those gifts may not always be something that one desires in one's life. It might not always come easily. It might have come with some toil, some hard work, some... Uh, unpleasantness, some challenge. It might have been a challenge to to make it happen. But there is something that is achieved at the end of this. And so the feeling I'm getting here is that there's organization to all of this. So if you're wondering, have you been floundering about and not really sure about where you've been going to, then there is a reason for all of this. If you've been wondering whether you've taken the right direction in your life, then there's reason for, for this. There is a, a framework which you don't potentially see or you don't you haven't perhaps you haven't seen it as yet which does exist which gives you um a reason for doing the things that you're doing right now for feeling the way you're feeling right now and so my sense here is that there's much more going on than is that meets the eye or much more going on that makes a lot of sense but one is not able to perceive it at this moment and i feel here that there's also a sense to me that there's more than one direction that can be taken or there's more than one influence at hand. There's more than one um, option uh, here that one can choose, you know. So perhaps there's a place that you want to go to. So there's more than one place. There's perhaps three or four places that you could go to or two or three places that you could go to. Uh, or perhaps there's a, a path or a project that, or three or four projects that you have at hand. Or, or well, I'm getting... I'm getting the sense it's more like two or three, but for some it might be more or less. And so there's these options, there's these decisions that need to be made. There's the direction in which you need to choose that you're going to go in, the direction in which you're going to invest in. And so that feels to me like uh, like w the, the, the the where we are standing or this energy, this card here, it kind of brings me to that energy so what decision are we needing to make or which direction are we choosing to go into right now because dependent on the energy that we've come from and what we've done we have been presented with three or four parts or two or three parts and we can take that energy and we can move forward at this moment and that's going to bring us somewhere that we need to go to but it ultimately um, it depends on which direction we need to go into, which we choose. So it's this card is almost like it's. I feel like the message here is that you're still the master of your destiny, and that you know the the world around you has come together to give you a coherent message of what you could potentially do, and it's up to you to decide what it is that you want to do right now as you go ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and actually look at the book here and um, see what the message is here. So this is the, the booklet that comes with it. And that's actually the uh, the same. It has the same cover as well. And in fact, this is one of the cards on the on the cover here. So the card here has the pronunciation each and uh, the common Mayan usage uh, 
as the jaguar or the heart. Um, and the qualities known to this card for this card are integrity, heart knowing, alignment with divine will, magician, shaman, jaguar, night seer, priest or priestess, torchbearer, magic, initiation. And the symbols are the jaguar, wisdom wand, all seeing eye, and the peacock. I'm just going to take it close to me as I read it to you. Uh, so it also has here the number 14 and the color being opalescence or ir iridescence. And the herbs are alacampane and basil. And the flower is a stargazer lily. The flower essence is a sunflower spiritualizing the ego. And the scent is patchouli. So I don't know if any of that resonates with you right now. Or perhaps that is some of the of some of what you need right now in your life or perhaps that will support you in your life the stones that they give here are maldivite up opal crystal ball rainbow moonstone green watermelon tourmaline and um, that's interesting because i really wanted to use these three green watermelon tourmalines today uh, as part of the options for how you should go about choosing it and then i thought well how will anyone differentiate between the three green um, watermelon tourmalines and so I left it um, instead I chose these uh, little spheres the direction here is north and the element is air and it offers the shadow wisdom which is issues of integrity personal power control will out of alignment with divine will need for approval and recognition mind out of alignment with heart knowing and then it talks about the shadow transformation which says develop a clear connection with divine will and with and your essence self be transparent innocently allowing magic to come through you rather than needing to create it trust open to heart knowing and limitless possibilities and the harmonic wisdom is melody so i'm just going to go ahead and read a bit of the message that's here it's quite a long message and so yeah it's, it says that the card is called the discoverer and it says jaguar seer show me the larger vision in alignment with the divine will i call on you my integrity to refine receiving nine indicates that magic is afoot you've drawn the light magician the Z the jaguar's seer expand your vision to include the excitement of more magic in your life ish challenges you to pick up your wisdom wand and embrace the with the beneficial use of will through your presence and simple beingness Magic's dimensional doorway opens. Okay, magic is a type of perception. Magic dances only in the present tense. Magic requires reverent attention. Are you silent enough to receive it? Magic requires open, flexible awareness to show its myst mysterious face. Thus, if you're trying to be in control in your ego, you'll probably not perceive what is magical around you. Simplify. Stop thinking and enter into direct perception of what is. Magic will have no choice but to dance with you. So I feel that, you know, it's really interesting that this card's come out and, and the way in which that's been, um, the, the author there has, has put that across because I feel that this energy is very relevant for the moment in terms of the last few weeks uh, as well. And uh, tomorrow I will put out an energy forecast and we'll talk a bit more about that. But it, it's very much about being still enough being calm enough to see what's around you and then to be able to manifest because this is such a, an amazing time to be able to manifest um, and to create and things can move quite quickly right now but uh, it's also a time when you can feel quite hyper when you can feel quite overwhelmed quite um, ungrounded and so it's about channeling that energy channeling that will uh, that you have and to be able to push through to be able to to really access what it is that you want to with not much effort at all but simply by being yeah, in a certain way and so I feel that um, yeah there's a lot here to comprehend and to move with and once again I feel like um, the message here is to choose your path simply choose your path be still enough to be able to choose your path don't be overwhelmed with all the options that you have don't be overwhelmed with all the energy that's around you, all the buzzing that's around you, everything that's going on right now. Um, be still in yourself because right now it requires you to be still and to be able to make a decision so that you can go forward. All right. So I'm going to leave you with that message. I hope that resonates and I hope it helps in some way. And uh, yeah, 
let me know how you guys are doing let me know how you are going along and um, whether this resonates or not all right okay so moving on so for those of you who've chosen the second option here we are asking what is your oracle guidance for this week what is your oracle guidance in this upcoming week Oh, it's almost like there's a message that needs to come out but is almost not wanting to come out here. Manic. So for those of you who've chosen the option number two, the card here is manic. And I feel here that there's a need to be closed. There's a closing that's necessary. There's uh, a needing of something to come to a close uh, or closure. There's something to be held, uh, to be closed, held closed. It's almost like there's a need to bring something to stillness, bring something to a point where you are being protected, uh, where you're being shielded, where you're being covered. Um, something to remove something and to bring it into stillness. There's also a sense here that there is a kind of mechanical feel about this. It's almost like uh, a sense that it needs to happen in a particular way. It needs to unravel in a way that is um, quite mechanical or automatic or robotic. And that it requires um, some kind of perhaps bureaucracy or administration or there are some rules and regulations as to how this needs to happen. So I feel here there's uh, that this is a good time. This week is a good time to be able to close something to be bring bring something to closure to bring yourself into a space that's safe and and secure and to um to help yourself move forward in a way that you haven't been allowing yourself to move forward so it could be that you've been um waylaying your spiritual practices or you've been uh delaying actually taking charge of something or making putting something um, into practice uh, or perhaps there needs to be something like um, you know you inaugurate your altar or perhaps this is a, a week in which you move into a new home or th perhaps this is some place in which you you find solace and solitude and and some kind of reprieve and so this card is talking to me about being able to access that being able to move into that being able to give yourself that which is good and that which is um, going to help you as you go along because there's a need for that. There's a need for being nurtured. There's a need for healing. There's a need for stillness. There's a need for closure. There's a need to come out of the spotlight a little bit, um, perhaps just step away from social activity a little bit in order to go inward a, a little. So this might apply to you as well if you've been around a lot of people with very different energies, if you felt like you've been forced to be with other people if you felt like you the you know being with other people is not normally part of your routine or not something that necessarily serves you but you've had to do it and this card's talking about now just being able to take time off in this week and just go towards your own path so maybe you'll still need to be around other people but then being able to do so in a way where you know you're headed to something else you've made the plans and you simply following through on those plans to be able to create what it is that you need and what it is that is good for you so i'm not that familiar with this deck and these messages are quite abstract and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and look into the book um, and read the message for you as intended by the author as well so here's the book he, he, here it's called the mayan oracle and it's a, a galactic language of light so the card here manik it's pronounced manik and the, the qualities are completion gateway opening beauty spiritual tools divination identification acting as if dance mudra priest or priestess okay so i'm just going to read a little bit here 
and um, yeah, and we'll move ahead. So it says, Manik is a gateway, an opening, a portal from one understanding to another. A clue to the meaning of Manik is found in the meditation. I am, by thinly veiled design, the threshold to other dimensions. In my ending is my beginning. The initiatory gateway awaits. Manik is the seventh or last archetype in the cycle of development of primary being. It represents the power found in completion. Manik is seen as a closure, which is really an opening to another level of being. Like the fluidity of moving water, Manik is associated with the process of dance, mudra and beauty. This movement is a metaphor for the ebb and flow of life. A meditation with Manik experience the flowing beauty that is the beauty of the cosmic dance. Remember this essence and this fluidity at times when your life feels most inflexible or lacking in beauty. Manik represents the beauty way, the ability to see intrinsic beauty within yourself and in all beings. Living the beauty way requires being in your own beauty and power. From this place, your self-authority naturally flows. This is the position where your ego becomes aligned with divine will. When you are standing in your full beauty and power, your very presence invites others to be all that they are. To the Maya, Manik represents the dear, the gentle, serenely aware guide who walks in fluid beauty and grace. So there's quite a lot to read here. I'm not going to read the whole word, but I just want to, to elaborate on that. So I, I definitely think um, the author here intended a message that was similar to the one that I've been channel channeling to you. And I, I just, you know, it really is about closure. It's about ending something and beginning something new. It's about stepping into some place where you can be yourself, where you can manifest, where you can be in your own spirituality or giving space for your, to your own spirituality. So giving room for you to be able to do what it is that you want to do and need to do and um, and not allowing something to, to draw from you. Uh, just, just be able to access this or change this in a way um, or change your path in a way that allows you to have your full power and to be able to access all that it is that you need at this moment. So I think I'm going to leave you with that. I hope that that has helped you. And I hope that that message resonates with you. Please let me know if it does. And I wish you a very blessed week ahead. Many blessings to you. Please stay safe and healthy and well. So for those of you who have chosen the third option here, we're asking the question, what is it that you've come here to hear? What is the weekly oracle guidance for this week? Oops. Some cards have fallen out here. I'm just going to go ahead and give it a proper shuffle. So in all these cards and in, in this in most of this deck, there's this um What's this image of the full moon here behind this card? I find that quite interesting considering we are having a full moon tomorrow. So here the card's called Ben. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, read from the book before I actually channel a message for you. Uh, with the others I had uh, previously channeled a message and then read through the book. Uh, but here I feel like uh, the message from the book is probably going to get us to the point that we need to be at. So there's quite a bit of information here in, in the book uh, for this card. Um, the common Mayan usage is cane. It says qualities are fluid reference points, time, space, traveler, skywalker, angelic messengers, pillars of heaven, courage, new directions, mysterious journey and compassion. And the symbols are quartz, crystal, crystal flight and heart chakra. So it's the number 13 universal movement and the color is sunset pink. The herbs are almond, everlasting and clove and the flower is pink rose. The flower essence is silver sword, um, or spiritual awakening and the scents are rose or rose geranium. The, the stones are kunzite, 
rose quartz, pink sapphire, star rose quartz. The element is earth and the direction is east. And um, so it's, it's, this is all the information about the card that's basically going to allow you to, to, to access a particular kind of energy to help you, to help support you as you go ahead in the week. So it says here that the shadow wisdom is the desire for isolation, withdrawal or retreat, fear of the unknown, limited reference points and oversensitivity. And I'm just going to go ahead and read uh, the shadow wisdom. It says, what do you experience of the thought of moving to the unknown with no guarantees? You're being asked to explore what may appear a fearful and unfamiliar territory where your points of reference have become fluid. Part of this, your journey is like floating in space without the restriction of gravity. It can be slightly unsettling at first, but as you get used to it, the mystery becomes exciting and courage arises naturally to meet each new challenge. Remember, your reality is maintained by your beliefs and patterns, which may be viewed as fixed reference points. When these points change, your reality shifts. As you become anchored in a secure sense of self and connection to source, you have a lifetime that will help you journey safely to any destination. From this foundation, you can move freely, exploring new mysteries at will. Look at your life as a sacred journey. Access your courage and feel your way through any processes that may feel that may appear difficult or uncomfortable. Take heart, Skywater. In drawing the star, you are touched by the angelic messenger who offers you unconditional strength and courage to venture into the unknown. So I feel this card is very much about coming out of your comfort zone and, and very much about, you know, just as the card, as the message says there, it's very much about walking your own path and being able to do so uh, while being able to do so, to be able to define your own rules as you do so. And to remember that you are the one who defines the rules by which you live and by which you walk. And so it doesn't have to be um, the way you, it's been before. And it might even appear that things are topsy-turvy or upside down or uncomfortable when, or even dangerous as in the way that you see it because it's not familiar to you and you're not comfortable with it. But this this card is almost telling you, well, take that step forward and understand that things are going to be a bit upside down or a bit strange or a bit different from what you're used to. So your reference points, your points of comfort, what makes you feel secure is, is going to be different. And it almost asks you to take on that challenge to see how comfortable you can be outside of your comfort zone and to ask you, you know, how far can you go with this? And the other point in, that's made in the card, in the in the meaning, in the reading, um, in in what I read, sorry, just a moment ago, is that bit about being becoming comfortable, like you know, taking the first steps. And of course, it's going to feel uh, uncomfortable, but then you know, it becomes your reality after a while. And the only way to do it is to start it and to go along and to access it. So just go out there and, and then do it and, you know, try to make any opportunity to do it. Don't be afraid to do it and don't be afraid to ask for help and don't be afraid to to ask the universe for help as well. So just you have to if you want to do something and you're afraid of doing it, you just have to get out there and do it. And as you start doing it, of course, it's going to feel uncomfortable and strange at the beginning and you may feel a bit foolish or you may feel quite you know a bit ignorant as you as you're learning about it but as you acquire the knowledge that will pass away obviously and so but you know you need to get out there and and do it it's like you know learning to ride a bicycle the first steps are always hard and takes a moment before you learn to do it and then you actually have mastered it and so I think that it's something that you know it's almost like there's this new path or there's this path that you've been eyeing for a while now and it's time to start walking on it as opposed to just wondering, you know, what is it that I need to do now and being bewildered or being overwhelmed by how strange it is or what it what is, you know, what is the way forward. I feel here that it might also mean that the source of comfort or support or support structures that you might have had previously don't apply to the path that you 
you're moving into as you go forward. So it's different from everything you've known. And it might be that that as you as you move ahead, you have to be quite confident in yourself. And it's difficult to be quite confident, especially if you've moved ahead already and you are quite uh, quite secure or, or settled in a particular form of life or work or way of being. And then you suddenly have to try a new form and it makes you feel unsettled. Uh, but the, the advice here is to simply walk through it, walk through this valley of unknowingness and just walk through confidently because it's what is important is not the environment that's going to change you or the world that's around you that's different. What's important is your connection to yourself. And when you have that connection to yourself, you can be in any environment, any circumstances, any work environment, any a sporting arena um, and still be able to to manufacture what it is that you desire and so I feel here that this card is is about is a bit about that um, I also feel like you know at the beginning as you enter into the what you're going to next you might feel at odds with yourself perhaps because you don't understand the language or perhaps because you just don't have the experience or you just haven't had enough uh, exposure to something and um, I feel here that that's okay you know it's um, there is that gap and it's going to be okay it's just you know there's that gap and that you're trying to bridge but what you don't realize is that part of you has been made to do this already you've been it you it's almost like your destiny to do this and so you just have to allow that gap to close by itself naturally and not focus on how wide that gap is and not focus on closing that gap, but just let it happen naturally. So yeah, that's been a bit of an abstract uh, kind of message here. <laughs> and um, this card is pretty abstract for me as well. So um, I hope that has been helpful. I hope that this reading has helped you in some way at least. And that you go ahead in this week and you have a lovely week ahead. That you're able to um, to come to a space in yourself that allows you to be who you want to be and I wish you well as you go along and and as you do that and uh yes I will be uh I will upload an energy forecast tomorrow um for the full moon and so I will see you there hopefully all right so wishing you a blessed week ahead and please stay healthy and safe and blessings abound from Kismet Rising.